in South Africa and a very warm welcome to you. This is Afternoon Express and I am not alone. I have got my resident chef and foodie, Chef Dumi. Welcome to the loft. Hello, beautiful. You are looking amazing today. I can see, girl, Simesha, <laughs> Nukmesha. Pink Power Rangers all. Now, we can't um, make this exploration ah. more special without having to invite our guest chef for today. Welcome to The Loft, Chef S uh, Siska. It's lovely to have you. Thank you so much. Lovely to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, you are known as Madame Baker. So are you going to bring some of your expertise to The Loft? <laughs> for sure. Well, I'll try my best. <laughs> okay. Now, we have them for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert. And quite honestly, we still can't get enough of eggs. Welcome to this Tuesday Afternoon Express cook-along. And let's open in today's menu, it's an excellent menu. Now, we are being joined, as I have said, by Madame Baker herself, Chef Siska Rousseau, as she shares a delectable Scotch quail eggs recipe that uses eggs and snook in a traditional European dish called kedri. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Kedri. And then, of course, she goes, she's going to be taking our order to private school. Now, we're also traveling to Rockville's farm to meet the farmer. So come with me, Balisa Dembe, as we go on this culinary exploration. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> now, in this week's segment of Meet the Farmer, Dumi visited the amazing Rockland Egg Farm to learn all about sustainable poultry farming. Hopefully, she didn't put all of her eggs in one basket. <laughs> <laughs> A beautiful autumn day in Simon's Town, and no, I'm not here to spend a day at the beach. I'm meeting Einstein Sabanda, who since 2013 has been producing some of the most delicious organic eggs right here on the edge of the ocean. Einstein, are these chickens fans of Afternoon Express? Because I seem to be uh, forming a bit of a fan club here. <laughs> <laughs> the chickens are very happy. You seem to be so happy and passionate about what you're doing. It started in high school. I mean, what started, what formed this love for chickens? The love of chickens started from school when I did my agriculture lessons at school. So it became one of the interesting subjects for me. So I got into agriculture more than I would, I would, I would practice is any other subject so that's where everything started. What does a day look like for a chicken farmer? It's a bit of a hard work but though it's one of those interesting things to do if you are happy doing what you're doing yeah. When it comes to running a sustainable chicken farm what are the things that we need to consider? This begins with uh, how you respect the nature mm. and how you work with the mostly uh, the ecosystem. Mm. So our our chicken farm run is a consistence of recycling of things. We use worms for tilling the ground, turning the ground. We use pigs. So we use all the recycles from the kitchens. We feed those to the chickens. They all look so happy running freely here. Is this how you feed them? We do let our chickens out for the whole entire day. So they feed outside, they scratch whatever they get from the ground, uh, from the grass, they feed from that. We let our chickens outside so that they can benefit from the, from, from the worms, they can benefit from the grass, and they can benefit from all the greens that we give them, and that enriches the eggs with the nutrients that makes uh, the life of an egg better, and then the taste of an egg very different. So the eggs become very, very nice. The one thing I love is I noticed that you've opened up a coffee shop here and you've opened up the farm to the community. Okay. Many people come into the deli to buy some of our produce. We also have uh, kids play sections where kids can ride their bicycles, they can just roam around the farm and then we have people coming for some training. People ask for some more knowledge on how they can do their own backyard chicken practice so people can buy eggs and chickens from here. You guys have quite a lot of chickens here. What's the scale on the eggs you produce? We measure like uh, 1,800 to 2,000 chickens. We get about maybe 600 eggs a day to 1,000 eggs a day. Now, Einstein is famous for his chicken eggs, but there's another type of unique egg on this farm. Einstein, let's go meet those quails. So this is the quail coop. Okay. It's a built a little bit lower because uh, the quails, they fly away. These guys are so small and cute. I mean, how different are their eggs to normal chicken eggs? So these are quail eggs, mm -hmm. and then these are chicken eggs. So the difference is their, their size, as you can see. 
And what's the difference between a normal uh, chicken egg and a quail egg? The study values the quail eggs more nutritious uh, than the chicken egg. To keep the quails is a bit different from the chickens because quail need more tender care than the chickens. I can let my quails, my chickens out, but I can't easily let my quails out. So it makes the operations very, very different. Now everyone knows when you buy eggs from the store, they already have a date on it, but how long would the shelf life be for an egg once it's laid? So the egg, when it's laid, comes with a natural cover on it. Mm -hmm. So that protects it from all the, all the dust because the egg is permissible. Mm -hmm. It can breathe. The shelf life can go up to three months, but if you start to clean the egg or to put it in the fridge and out of the fridge, then the egg start to breathe in and out. So then the life, the, sh the life, the shelf life of the egg becomes limited mm. than when it's not cleaned. Well, Einstein, thank you so much for teaching me even more about eggs. I mean, I thought I knew enough, but clearly you can always learn every day. Um, I'm gonna take some of these and may I please have another tray because I'm already having ideas in my head about the recipes that I'll actually create with these beautiful eggs. Yes, yes, you're welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming and that's all pleasure from us. Well, there's nothing quite like fresh eggs straight from the farm. This is gonna be good. Wow, Dumi, I mean, truly, Einstein is an expert when it comes to those eggs. I love that experience. Just utter excellence. <laughs> <laughs> now, Chef, um, we did see Uu Einstein speaking about the importance of having fresh eggs. Yeah. So he didn't show us, though, how to make sure we can keep those eggs fresh. So what's the best way to test the freshness of an so egg? I think the easiest way to test, can you quickly pass sure. me some of those eggs and the quail's eggs. Sure. So the easiest way to show before you crack it open would be to put it in water. If it is fresh, it will go right to the bottom. Actually, I'll leave that one out so I can show you with quail's eggs. Okay. So these ones are not so fresh and you will see that they float at the top. Wow. So as the freshness starts to go, you'll see the egg starts standing up on its head and then slowly make its way up. Alternatively, if you break it, if it's very watery, it's not that fresh, and if the white is slightly more gelatinous, it's a fresher egg. Wow. And at the end of the day, Dumi, I know last week we were speaking about if you perhaps want to poach your egg, it's imperative to have a fresh egg. Very true, yes. Balissa, because like uh, uh, Sixth just mentioned now, it becomes so watery that if it's not fresh, it goes all over, and what you want is want it to, you want it to be nice and put together. Yeah. So the fresher the egg, the better. Sometimes in summer, though, the chickens will drink a lot of water, and that will also affect the consistency of the egg white. So it might not be that it's not fresh anymore, but the chickens just drink, drink a lot more water. And you also said to me last week, the fact that the more, in terms of freshness of an egg, I was like, how do you make sure that your eggs don't get don't lose their freshness? And you basically said, it's because the shell, the outer shell of an egg, air is able to come in like it you know it's so flimsy and it's, it's boring, so yeah. yes yeah. so then is that essentially just what you need to keep your eye on yeah so so as farmers say there's natural enzymes that kind of protect the egg there and if you wash the egg off you will wash those enzymes off and the egg becomes more porous over time mm. so it will lose some of its density and that kind of takes the freshness away now chef we are going to be using eggs in all of our recipes today yes. so i want to find out from you quail eggs chicken eggs what's your favorite Duck eggs. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> Change it up. Duck eggs. Yes. So what is it about duck eggs that just gets you? Uh, it's just a poached duck egg just has a different kind of flavor to it. But, you know, quail egg, chicken eggs, any kind of egg, I love it. It's winning. I love and it. for yourself, do me. Balissa, I have always wanted to try ostrich egg. I've never had... I, I can't choose between... Uh, chicken and quail but I've always wanted to try ostrich but now that we're on that exploration I should maybe work up that. an appetite yeah <laughs> <laughs> but ostrich eggs are huge they're like yes. humongous they're the size of almost my head I could say like a melon so um, I love the fact the versatility of eggs and that's what we're highlighting today you can enjoy eggs almost at any time of the day and not only not any time of the day in any kind of recipe so some of the things that we're going to be highlighting when it comes to eggs can you give us a little bit of a what can we, what can we expect for today, we're going to be making a little bit of kedgeri, which has some chicken, uh, yeah, 
mm. chicken eggs in there. Then we are going to make a beautiful scotch egg, yeah. which is just something different. And then we're going to do a kota, which has a different style of egg, fried egg. Beautiful. Now, all of these recipes in Zanzi, you can head over to afternoonexpress.co.za and we have detailed it quite thoroughly. The method, the ingredients, so you can shop till you drop and make sure you can make these incredible dishes. Now, on social media, we have not forgotten about you. The versatility of an egg is no yolk. So what is your favorite way to enjoy an egg? Use that hashtag Afternoon Express in all of your comments. See you after these. S3 is the new home of the Safters. So open up with S3 and celebrate Afternoon Express's Palesa Tembe by voting for her for best presenter. Dial star 120 star 32020 hash and follow the prompts to vote for Palesa Tembe by selecting six. Watch the awards on the 22nd of May to see if Palesa takes home that SAFTA. Open up with S3 and support our talent. Mo, so with those questions um, about the cage and whatever, please keep them up. Ne? Keep them up so that whilst we're cooking, we can ask um, all those questions. It should come naturally, so you have to pay attention because she might just answer already what is a cage So you just scroll up and then you'll give me the outro. You learn, thank you. You learn something new every day. Welcome back to Afternoon Egg Express. <laughs> now, as you might have already guessed, today's theme is all things eggs. From how to keep them, how to cook them, and how to enjoy them. With the help of our guest chef, Siska Rousseau, we have put together three delicious recipes that show you just how versatile eggs can be. Now, we're going to be starting off our delicious cook-along with a snook kedri, where we are going to be incorporating the quail eggs that we got from Rockland's farm. Now, Dumi, the eggs are, the, the eggs are there. <laughs> yes, darling, they are. Oh, yeah, so we've got this tray of eggs that we got from the chicken eggs. We also have some quail eggs that we got, but we're not going to use the quail eggs for the first recipe. We're just going to use normal eggs for our kedgeri because a kedgeri is somewhat, uh, I could call it a fried rice of sort. It's just that it's tops with, topped with beautiful eggs on the top. In this case, we're using normal chicken eggs, but you can use uh, quail eggs as well. But obviously, if you want the recipe details, South Africa, yeah. all you need to do is go to afternoonexpress.co.za and take it over, Chef Siska. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're gonna start off by frying our onions. Mm -hmm. There we go. Gonna pop a bit of this into the pan. 
There we go. Wow, so you already need to make sure you have a hot pan. <laughs> yeah, always. Okay. How do you cook? Now, I'm telling you, but sometimes <laughs> I get so afraid of burning things almost um, from the get-go. So sometimes I just allow my onions to simmer and kind of get that golden brown colour slowly but surely. And I also love the fact that, Kilmi, you've already told us, a kedri is like a savoury rice. Yes, Vanessa. If you think of egg fried rice and stuff like that, it, in essence, you cook everything else, add, add your, um, eggs at, your rice and eggs at the end and so forth. In this case, we're not frying the eggs, we're actually yeah. boiling them. I've just dropped in some eggs into our water. So what I normally would suggest if you are making, uh, if you're boiling your eggs, yeah. try and get them at room temperature and start with cold water and then bring it up to temperature then it starts boiling. Because the thing is, if you get your eggs and you put them cold into boiling water, they can crack open and that defeats the purpose. Oh, yes. So we'll let those uh, boil to whatever you, lightness you prefer. Some people like them soft, some people like them hard. I like my eggs uh, cooked <laughs> all the way through. <laughs> but in most cases for dishes like this, I'd like it medium or soft. And I just want to show you the best and easiest way to remove the shell from mm. the egg while Siska's uh, frying up there. Once you've boiled your egg nice and hard enough, then all you do is you just press it down and roll it out like this. What this does is that it releases the shell from the actual skin, you know? Okay, looks like my eggs are nice and cooked here. And what I want to show you is how to release, and I'm sure you're wondering why I've got the water here. It actually helps with removing the shell from the egg. So all you do is you literally just keep it in there and it makes it easier for you to remove that shell without breaking the egg apart. Beautiful. And that's basically a simple tip anyone wants to use if you want to. If you don't want to use it, I guess it's not <laughs> sure you should be watching. <laughs> I love this. But basically because we, ba we, we can't be as flexible that we want as we want to be, I'm going to be chopping up, I've already started, some delicious spinach. Now spinach wilts like nobody's business. You can have so yeah. much spinach, but by the time it heats up and gets cooked, it almost disappears. Mm -hmm. So I've made sure that we've got quite a healthy portion of spinach because I can see this end result here. There's some green and that green is provided and that iron is provided from the spinach. But what else do we need, Siska, to put this together? So we're going to use a little bit of red pepper. I just added some turmeric to the pan here and the fennel seed. You can see the colour is starting to change quite a bit with the turmeric in there. Yeah. I'm going to add the mustard seeds right now. Mm. There we go. Just let it go a bit. Coriander seeds. Mm. All right, and then while that goes, I'm gonna get this pepper going. I'm gonna use half half one for this bit. There we go. So basically, it's, it's, it's whatever you have in your fridge or your pantry also could. You can really kind of use anything. It depends what you enjoy. I like to let the 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 seeds simmer a little bit. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna throw that in there. I'm just removing this balisa because we also just made this dish a little earlier. Mm, so I yeah. just want to start plating there it up we while go. you guys are showing us Get exactly in. what went into this. I'm just going to put okay, it over and then we're gonna here. Add a bit of chili in there. There we go. It's garlic. Wow, healthy chunk there of garlic. Go. It's <laughs> getting cold, honey. You know, we need it. Always. Domi, you were saying, where does this recipe originate from? I mean, the name is quite unique. But it's, it is quite a, a bit of a debate because some people say India, some people say the UK. <laughs> uh, so I'd like to think a little bit more research might need to be done. Oh, wow. But it is, in essence, just another way of utilizing your eggs and utilizing your rice in a way that is easy and simple. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, um, Chef Siska has added everything that we have here. We've got all the spices, we've got our green spinach in yep. there. Yeah. We're going to go salt in... Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. <laughs> Always. <laughs> and our rice. And all I'm going to do to top it all off, because we want to make sure that this dish is a, a star quality. Mm. We just top it with our beautiful eggs on the top, nothing else. If you want to, you can even make your, color your eggs if you like them and want them nice and yellow. Boil them with some turmeric and Ooh. then that actually colors the egg white and makes it also. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Turmeric, add everyone, throw it in the pan and enjoy. Now you learn something new every day and I, for one, can tick off the art of kedri making off my list. Now this is only the beginning of our jam-packed, or should I say, egg-packed Tuesday Masterclass. We have two more exceptional recipes to share with you.
There is a classic mayonnaise that brings out the traditional French in three levels of tanginess. The mild classic, the medium classic, the strong classic. Tangy, the way you love it. Made with love, fat lover. Welcome back to the show. Now move over boiled egg salad. Our <laughs> next egg inspired recipe is a scotched quail egg salad with nuts and a tangy clover classic mayo dressing to go with it. Now it's what we call a grand level up from the egg salads that we've come to know. Now Chef Siska, what do we need to put this together? So, you are going to make a lovely salad for us on that side okay. um, with, with some nuts and seeds and lovely fresh herbs. And we are going to make some eggs. So, we need quail's eggs, we need beautiful mints, and we need a little bit of spices to spice things up. Perfect. So, in order for us to get this started, Balissa, mm. you're doing the salad, yes. So, Siska and I are going to be making the scotch egg and the mints and so forth. Yes. I'm chopping up your chives for you. Thank you. And it's such a simple recipe because it's just a couple of ingredients that go into that mince. It's just pork mince, yeah. mustard, and chives and some salt and pepper yeah that's it that's so, it well, can mm. i ask you just to get our quail eggs into the water so long so they can start boiling but we already have some that we've boiled a little earlier so if you want do you want to perhaps tell people how to determine whether an egg is boiled uh to the right consistency yeah so we had some boiled mm -hmm. um let me show you with this one here yeah let's cut it through let's cut it through so this would be a soft boiled egg if you look at this little baby over here. So the yolk on the outside is nice and hard. Uh, I mean, the white. The white. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the white is nice and hard. And then the egg yolk on the center is nice and soft. So this is what we call, call a soft, soft boiled, boiled egg. egg. Obviously, the more you cook it, the longer you cook it, it goes from being this soft, going harder and harder and harder. So in essence, if we were using a big egg, we would say that this would be about a four to five minute boil. Five minute boil. Yeah. So to six minutes goes to medium. Six minutes is, would, would be more uh, like harder. Closer to yeah. hard. So four minutes would be soft, five minutes a bit harder, and then six minutes, seven minutes, you're getting to blue. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so in essence, now that you've mixed up our mix, uh, the mixture here, I'm going to start chopping yep. those chives for you. Um, what is the origin of, of scotch eggs? I think, according to my knowledge, I didn't even know about scotch eggs until I became a chef. Yes, sir. Apparently, it's not really Scottish. It's really? actually from, <laughs> Lon <laughs> from London. Wow. Um, and it's, you know, there's, there's two ways that they go about it. It could be that it's the, the gentleman was called Scotch. Mm. Okay. Surname was Scotch. Um, but the other story is that it was um, this company that had this beautiful traveling eggs that just had a bit more nutrients and it was easier for like, yeah, for travels. Um, and that was the uh, posh boiled eggs <laughs> that they served. So yeah, London, <laughs> not so Scotland. As, it seems as if we are keeping things European today mm -hmm. when it comes to our beautiful egg recipes. I mean, even with the salad, it is super quick, super simple. I've already chopped up the greens and basically I'm just throwing everything in. I've got some raisins here. There we go. And I'm just gonna put that in there. And then Dumi, I hear I see we've got some more, a variation of seeds and nuts. Correct, Balissa. So it's a very nutty salad um, in their cup a couple of different nuts. We've got some cashew nuts, pistachio nuts, we've got some sunflower seeds, we've got mm. some uh, pumpkin seeds as well. And all of that works well with the salad we're trying to make because the egg can be very rich with that yolk on the inside if you yeah. want it nice and soft. So we want something just to cut through that. But in order for us to get to the scotch part, we have to have uh, something to put the egg in, right? Yes. yes. Which is exactly. what you're doing now. This so is just exactly what I'm doing now, yeah. So. yeah. So we can okay. either roll it out or we can just kind of press it out with the hand. So we, these ones, we put in the fridge a little bit just to kind of make it a bit more set. Okay. So you can either roll it between two pieces of That's baking what paper. what I'm going to do and you're going to do the manual. Or you can just kind of <laughs> press it with your fingers, you know, <laughs> depending on what time you have, especially because we're using quail's eggs, so they're okay. so small, mm. you know. Now, when you're making um, such a delicious salad, I think that you have to pair it with an equally delicious dressing. Now, for mm -hmm. the dressing, I'm going to be using some Clover Classic mayo. Now Clover Classic mayo is available in different levels of tanginess. Mild, which is number one, medium, number two, and strong three in this recipe. Now I love myself some number one because it also, I don't want to overpower the yeah. flavors that are going on. So I'm just going to put some level one mayo 
right here. And then I basically just do me mix everything else up. I'm gonna have some lemon juice in there. Here's some lemon. Um, and then Tumi, what is this? This looks like a mustard. Yes, Palisa, it is a mustard. Um, it just helps with that tanginess for this recipe that we're trying to make here. So it helps cut through. You know, any dressing is not, a, people don't consider a dressing a dressing unless it's got a bit of a zinc to it. Yep. Yeah. So that's what the mustard would help with over there. And we're continuing to bread our scotch eggs here. So we've started off with some flour. Some flour. And then uh, Cisco going Some in eggs. with the egg. <laughs> so the whole idea is, in, in essence, a scotch egg would be an egg that's inside of meat filling of sort, right? Yes. Mince in most yeah. cases. And you can use any kind of mince, really, that, that suits you. If you don't want pork, you can use chicken, you can use beef, you can even use a mixture. It doesn't have to be... Okay. Specific. Perfect. Yeah, so, Palisa, oh. we've got some that we've fried a little earlier. So, if you look at this, the eggs are nice and cooked. I'm just going to put them over here. And if possible, can I ask you just to Beautiful. give me some of your dressing and we'll just drizzle it over here. And this is how it comes out looking nice and delicious. That dressing Ooh. that we've made a little earlier has a mixture of the yogurt, a mixture of the clover classic, and we've also got the honey and all that beautiful stuff in there. So, this is yeah. our completed dish delicious scotch quail eggs and our clover classic dressing. So to me, I just kind of did this, and here we go. There we go. Superstar nice. quality. Now, there is no doubt that this recipe will definitely be a crowd pleaser. And if you've missed out on any of the steps, just head over to afternoonexpress.co.za to get the full ingredients list and recipe. There we go. Zeris, a classic mayonnaise that brings out the traditional French in three levels of tanginess. The mild classic, the medium classic, the strong classic. Tangy, the way you love it. Made with love by Clover. All right, so we are well right on our way on this Tuesday cook along, but of course we still have so many more recipes. What are we going to be making after the break? Oh, next, we're going to do a kota. Ooh. But we're... We're bringing it up a notch. Okay. Bring it up a notch. So we're taking the basic gota and we are elevating it. Stay tuned. S3 is the new home of the Safters. So open up with S3 and celebrate Afternoon Express's Palesa Tembe by voting for her for best presenter. Dial star 120 star 32020 hash and follow the prompts to vote for Palesa Tembe by selecting six. Watch the awards on the 22nd of May to see if Palesa takes home that SAFTA. Open up with S3 and support our talent.
our chef Siska and Chef Dumi as we are about to just divulge in gorgeous eggs. Now an egg can be prepared in 143 different ways. Now this is quite outstanding and extraordinary for such a humble and economical ingredient. So what better way to finish off an already extraordinary kukalang than by making a township classic using our hero ingredient. So Chef, how are we going to do this? You said you're looking forward to this segment. Yeah, going back to school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, private school this time. So, Kota, so you've got the, the bread there, you've got your chicken liver pate, then you've got some mango acha, and we're going to be doing the Viennas and the Russians and the egg and the cheese and all the goodness, and obviously the chips. The chips. Right. Now, what I do love about this, I'm just creating the base, you know, making sure that that bread has flavor. So I'm just buttering the bread all the way around with the liver pate. And why liver pate? I mean, can we basically just go nuts and, and play with almost any kind of flavor? Yeah, you can play with any flavor, but it just works so beautifully with, with the pork, and it just brings out this richness Mm. within this dish. Could you pass me the oil, please? Sure. Thank you so much. There we go. Now, Chef, you, we mentioned that we're going to be showing a different way to make eggs this time. So we've boiled in the first part, we've boiled in the second part. Do you want to show us? We're going to be frying the eggs this time. <laughs> I Hi. like my eggs sunny side up. Okay. So we're yeah. going to be doing that. I usually start on a low heat, adding it on a low heat as well. There we go. Now, Chef, you did say that you're going to make it uh, soft, a little easy. Yeah. So if you were to think of your favorite way that you would like an egg to be prepared, I already know mine. <laughs> mine is uh, over easy. What would yours be? I love scrambled eggs. Huh? I love a really nice, soft, bouncy scrambled egg. That's yeah. my favorite. A cheesy scrambled egg. Do you? <laughs> does that sound good? What do you like? I, I agree. Um, for me, it always is about the yolk. The, the runnier the yolk for me, the better. Mm. Obviously, as long as the egg is cooked, I want to make sure that the, the, egg, the yolk is for me what I need what I need. It's like a sauce. Sometimes if your egg is nice and soft, you don't need any additional sauce because the egg is great enough. Yeah. Now that chef, is so true. You've just added the eggs into there. What's the trick to making sure your egg is cooked correctly, especially if you're looking for sunny side up? So I always start on a low heat so okay. that you don't have the, the eggs burning on the sides and the bottom and it cooks slowly all the way through. Okay. Yeah. Awesome right. stuff. And I suppose Let's the importance of going. a strong spatula also comes into play. <laughs> making sure that when it's time to lift and scoop, the egg doesn't fall Always. apart and crumble. Always. Don't use a spoon. Just use a proper lifter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All righty. This chips is almost done. And then we're going to go on to those Russians and, yes, and so the we're Viennas. It, we're keeping it OG, Balissa. Normally, mm. people would want to pan fry their uh, Russians uh -huh. and their Viennas. We are keeping it OG. Like, whenever I go to Espaz and your thing, you got, I, I know for sure that they just hoi everything in that deep fryer from <laughs> the, the yeah. bologna to the Russians to the Viennas, everything. So it's perfect. It's one of those perfect meals that you want to have after hectic night, you know, <laughs> uh, so it's perfect, it's nice and greasy. So if you want to know exactly how what we got to this excellence that we have right here, just go to afternoonexpress.co.za for the full ingredient list and steps on how to assemble and make this yeah, amazing kota. Mm. Balesa, can I, can I, uh, can I whoa, take one whoa, of your whoa, kota? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you know that it's not a kota without the chakalaka, with the Very acha. True. You know, I'm just layering the acha. I mean, you there can go, go with the mango acha. You can go with um, any type of acha, I suppose. For me, the hotter the better, Dumi. I agree with you. Uh, Chef Siska, do you even enjoy acha? I do. I really, really do. And also, hot is always nice. Especially mm -hmm. with a dish like this, you need to kind True. of bring out that little spiciness. And the bread would obviously absorb a lot of this heat while you eat it. So I would definitely say that a more spicy acha would be a good idea yeah. for right. this one. So now that you've Brought, got your chips, the chips out, Chef. Yeah. I'm going to start assembling our kotas here. So we've got the base, because you know we know it comes with the layers, right? We started with that liver pate. Yes. We followed with our... Acha. acha. We call it the white liver. <laughs> so we liver pate, acha, and then we're going into those chips. Uh, mm. Kota's not complete without slab chips. And then the saucier, the better. Girl, mm. let me tell you something. I am in carb heaven. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. uh, All right. There we go. You can see the eggs slowly cooking from the bottom. So the the white is just kind of going through and your yolks is just nicely staying. Mm. Easy over, you'll kind of just wait until it's a little bit more. You want that white to just go a little bit more and then just flip it over. Yeah, I do see that the white is a little runny. Um, yeah. A lot of people though now have tended to uh, go towards having egg whites only. Whether yes. it's in an omelet or whether it's scrambled eggs, it's just egg whites. Trying to cut back on the calories and those high carb, um, uh, what calories? Calories, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no carbs, just calories. Yeah, so a lot of people do egg white omelets and um, but a lot of the nutrients are actually in the yolk absolutely so and flavor i mean 
It's like butter, adding butter. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Tumi did say it is all about the yolk. So Tumi, it seems like your kote is locked and go. loaded. That vehicle, Ipakshiwe, it is full to the brim. It's time now to put the meat on. Yes, Palissa. And all, as you can see, we've not melted our cheese at all because mm. the heat, the residual heat from what we're putting onto it now is going to cook it down. And then those eggs, uh, Chef Siska is going to put on the very top. And that's basically the pièce de résistance of our kotas. Love mm. it, here for it. <laughs> now, when and where? the kota originates remains a mystery to all but we know that it is exactly here to stay it is a fan favorite for years to come so just head over to afternoonexpress.co.za to get the full recipe list and ingredients as chef says lovely <laughs> <laughs> there we go our pharmacies are on the front line of healthcare. this is pharmacy of the week so we were bestowed the honour of being the National Pharmacy of the Year in 2019 and it was such an honour for us because it really meant that it could recognise my team and the difference that they've made in the community. We really look holistically at people's health, so not just traditional pharmacy and dispensary medicines but also at vitamin supplementation, health foods, how people can change their lifestyles to keep them better than well. Our staff knows everybody by their names, their surnames, everyone knows everyone's dogs, cats, uncles and aunties, everyone that walks into the pharmacy is family. We really look at keeping people better than well, not just keeping them well, but even going beyond that and looking holistically at how we can make a difference in their lives. Pharmacy of the Week, proudly brought to you by Adcock Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave.
who's in the mood for something spicy. Well, if you screamed yes, then watch this with caution. South Africa's master chef, Ruben Riffle, is back on the road with the Olive Pride Chef Tour. And this week, he turns all of his Durban travel inspiration into the ultimate lamb biryani that will have you begging for more. Cook along with us on the Clover Olive Pride Chef's Tour, a proudly South African cooking journey through the towns and dishes that made foodie heroes, such as the champion of traditional African cuisine, Luyanda Mafanya, master of fine dining, Chef Ruben Riffle, and proud flag bearer of National Bride Day, Jan Bry, made with Olive Pride. Prepare to be proud. This week on the Olive Bride Chef's Tour, Ruben Riffle's lamb biryani is the hero of the show, co-starring a most spicy roast vegetable dish. Whenever I'm in Durban, I love trying out some of the local specialities. Now, I love spicy food, so I love trying out all these different types of curries, but it also inspires me to cook something of my own. After visiting the spice market and collecting these lovely spices, I was inspired to make my version of an Indian classic. I'm making lamb biryani with spice roasted vegetables and preserved lemon. So biryani is basically meat and rice. Sometimes you can add lentils. I think that, that's the normal one that I grew up with in Cape Town especially. So today I'm using minced lamb instead of cube lamb that I think everyone would be used to. It just cooks so much quicker. And the spices I'm using, I'm using a lovely curry. I love the addition of dried curry leaves in here especially. It just makes it so much more fragrant. And I'm using a combination of curry powder and a garam masala. So this garam masala has got some star anise, some coriander seeds, fennel seeds, all those warm spices and cardamom of course. And then this, saffron. Not normally added into many biryanis, but this is going to make it extra special. I'm using coconut milk, a little bit of chicken stock and butter to enrich it even more. And then, what is a curry without ginger or garlic? I'm going to grate it just so it melts nicer into the curry. And the difference really is between maybe a curry that I grew up with is this one I'm going to cook all together and almost bake in the oven. work done, let's get cooking. First up, I'm going to heat up my oil. I'm using Olive Pride Blend. It's got a high smoking point, which makes it great for frying. But for me, the great thing is, is that it still retains that nice olive oil flavor. in. I'm going to fry that all for about three minutes just to give it some color before all the spices goes in. In goes the garlic and ginger. Ah, I can already smell those beautiful flavors. Now for the spices. So this is not a very hot curry. I would describe it as a more of a fragrant type of curry, but still delicious. Okay, now for the saffron. Now, this is optional in the recipe, but really this brings this dish way up to another level. I can smell all those flavors, spices really coming together, so it's time for the rice. Now I'm using long grain basmati rice and I've pre-soaked it for about 30 minutes and that just helps to speed up the cooking. Now for the liquids. Chicken stock. Coconut milk. and some unsalted butter. Now the butter just adds another level of richness to this dish. Salt and pepper to taste. Ah, 
This already smells so delicious. All I've got to do now is cover it with foil and then it goes into the oven for 30 minutes. family we love eating vegetables and I'm always looking at different ways of bringing it into the dishes that I cook at home so for this biryani I'm gonna add some nice veg some of my favorites cauliflower goes beautifully with curry so it's gonna really marry beautifully with that biryani some onion and I'm using red onion nice and sweet and I'm adding some mushrooms to it as well just because I love it so I'm gonna chop it up the cauliflower into florets so basically just slightly smaller this is gonna go into the oven as well for about 20 minutes so I want it you know to roast really nicely and to absorb all those spices that I'm gonna add in there as well red onion I'm just gonna slice it up nice and chunky Now for the mushrooms, you can leave them whole, but I'm gonna cut them up so that they can cook evenly with the rest of the veggies. So the spices I'm gonna be using for my veggies is fennel and cumin. I've sort of pre-toasted it a little bit, uh, and then I've added one pod of cardamom, and I've ground it fine like that. And to that, I'm gonna add just one tablespoon of turmeric. one tablespoon of cinnamon. Mix it all together and on it goes. And for some sweetness, I'm adding some sultanas. I'm from the Cape and I really want to bring a little bit of bork up into this dish. for my secret ingredient. So I'm using preserved lemon. It's slightly fermented and it adds quite a special dimension to this dish. I'm gonna finish off with Olive Pride Extra Virgin Olive Oil. It's a high quality oil and naturally low in cholesterol. see it's getting dark it's almost dinner time so this is gonna go into the oven for about 20 minutes and if everything goes well it should be ready by the time the biryani is done is done, my veggies is done. Let's quickly have a look at how it came out. Oh. Now that just looks amazing and it smells awesome. Now for the start of the show. Ah oh, man. Just the aromas, the smells that I'm getting out of this dish. You know I just want to I just want to tuck in. Now how I know it's cooked is you want your rice kernels to be nice and fluffy and they shouldn't be sticky at all now for a little garnish of coriander and there you have it, my lamb biryani with spice roasted vegetables and preserved lemon. Thanks for joining me on the Olive Pride Chef's Tour and I hope you enjoy preparing this dish at home with Olive Pride and prepare to be proud. Now if you'll excuse me, it's time for dinner. <laughs> Delicious. Next week on the Olive Pride Chef's Tour, we take in Franchuk, food, wine and art dynamo of the Western Cape. 
the town that's both the home to Chef Ruben's award-winning restaurants, but also where his love of fresh fruit and veg took root in the family garden and saw his career grow from there. You? That lamb biryani is after my heart. Now, to get the full recipe, you can visit www.clover.co.za. And even better, Olive Pride has partnered with Daily Dish, who create meal kits with fresh portioned ingredients, available for order online, so you can prepare the full meal at home with ease. To get Ruben's lamb biryani and spiced roasted vegetable meal kit, you can visit www.dailydish.myshopify.com. Now, on to some exciting news. Congratulations goes to Hwati Bernita Maja. Now you are our next winner and you get to walk away with a premium gas Weber Bri. Well done, girl. Now don't forget, you can still stand a chance to win a weekly Weber Bri and be entered into the grand prize draw to win a kitchen makeover worth 150,000 Rand. For details on how you can enter, you can buy Olive Pride in store and follow the ingredients and the instructions in the free recipe book. Good luck. Join Olive Pride Chef's Tour and travel the country as we cook along with Luyanda Mafanya, Ruben Riffel and Young Bride every Tuesday on Afternoon Express. Win one of ten cooking appliances weekly or a grand prize of a kitchen makeover with 150,000 Rand. To enter, buy any Olive Pride pack and dial star 120 star 2462 star with your unique code to enter. Prepare to be proud. Wow, love that. Um, to me, I feel like we just are quite steadily moving forward when it comes to uh, creating incredible meals and memories in the kitchen. Yes, Palissa, and as you can see, I've already started plating and I'm <laughs> starting with the number one, which is the kota. Uh, yes. Chef, do you want to just take us you? through what exactly we've got here? I think mm. we've got quite a feast. There we go. Can I pass some to you? Oh, thank so you. So we've got the kota, which is right over here. Mm -hmm. All right, so then we've got the beautiful kedgeri over here, and then we've got the scotch egg. Yeah, <laughs> that is exactly what I'm tired here. <laughs> I'm just diving straight in because I have not seen anything as gorgeous as I'm this. Go it almost that. looks like a little art piece. I know, right, Balissa? And as you can see with your egg, it's mm. nicely hard boiled. Mm. And over here, I've got a sunny side up egg that's nicely fried. And I just want to cut through it and make you guys understand what I meant about that sauce. Wow. Can you see the sauce I'm talking about, Balissa? All those additional <laughs> sauces mean absolutely nothing. But you better yolk. put that knife down and get that thing right in your mouth. Mm -hmm. I was told about gota eating etiquette and I was told no hands are needed in this uh, experience. So, mama, I made it. I love that. That looks delicious. And why don't you dive into that? I mean, that kedgeri. I've never experienced a kedgeri. I haven't tasted one. So right mm. now, are you enjoying it? Is this exactly what you wanted to prepare? This is beautiful. Mm. This is right for this weather and chases all that little bit of coldish, fluish bugs away. It almost feels like a warm hug. I'm looking forward to getting into that. Do you mm. mind passing me some? Just as you yeah. do, I want to find out just well, about sure. your background as a chef and how you got your start in the kitchen. So my start in the kitchen was mostly at home with my parents and my grandma cooked a lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot, and baked a lot. Um, and went to London, came back, studied social work and psychology and decided, you know what, I want to be a chef. I want to wear a chef jacket yeah. with like-minded people that are passionate about food. So I went to go study and work my way around in Stellenbosch and all the way through. Mm. And now I have a little bakery in the heart of Salt River. So yeah. And speaking about <laughs> hearts, this is a hug. This is delicious. I love the spiciness. That spiciness is definitely yeah, coming through. Exactly. It's, it, as I say, it's really good for this weather. Mm. Tell me, how's it going there? Are you loving what you're finding? I'm about to dig in, Balasa, because if you can see, we've also got some beautiful mm. snook that we added at the end uh, mm. of this, which also makes it a very proudly South African dish. You know how we like to just add our South African flair. Mm. So, yes, we don't know whether it's the... Um, people in UK or if it's the Indian people that originate from it, but we made sure that this uh, has a South African twist. But, Bali. Yes, my love. Uh, you know what's happening this weekend? <gasps> yes, I do. <laughs> I do know what uh, Dumi is alluding to the coveted SAFTA nominations and the SAFTAs that are going down this Saturday, the 22nd of May. Now, Dumi, I cannot believe that voting is coming to an end. I know, Balissa, and the 15th edition of the SAFTAs is taking place this Saturday, the 22nd of May, right here on S3 with Expresso's Graham Richards as one of the hosts. Our very own Balissa <laughs> Tembe has been nominated as Best TV Presenter! 
<laughs> and she can win with your help. All you need to do is to dial star 120 star 32020 hash on your mobile device and press one to vote for best TV presenter. Mm -hmm. Press zero for more options and then press the number CAC and then Palisa takes it home. <laughs> Very much looking forward to it and thank you to everyone who has already started voting. Voting is ending on the 9th of May at 9, at 19th of May. So please do get those votes in. Thank you so much for our exploration of we all things We need to first just that. Ah. It might not be champagne, but... <laughs> it will do. To you. And thank you so much for coming to Afternoon Express. South Africa, we will be carrying on this exploration on Thursday. So do not move a muscle because at half past five, we will be back. Thank you so much, Dumi. Good night, mm -hmm. stay safe, and happy eating. Cheers. Ciao. Cheers to family favorites and recipes passed from mothers to daughters. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.